I decree and declare over you uh, that in the mighty name of Jesus, Shekina uh, Masupata Labade Bekeliso, I pray for you uh, that God will raise up help from no sources. Uh, and from unknown sources uh, to favor your cause, uh, to favor your goals, uh, in the name of Jesus. Uh, I say God will raise men uh, from known sources uh, and from unknown sources, uh, in the name of Jesus. Uh, from today, uh, receive help beyond your background. Uh, I say from today, uh, receive help beyond your background. Uh, Receive up beyond your connections uh, in the name of Jesus. Uh, on your matter, uh, the hand of God will be evident. Uh, in your business, uh, the hand of God will be evident. Uh, Baba Satabadeh, I said uh, from today, uh, everywhere you labor, uh, you will see prophet. Uh, the Bible says uh, in all labor, uh, there is prophet. Uh, I declare and declare uh, concerning your finances, uh, everywhere uh, that you labor, uh, you will see prophet. Uh, you will see gains uh, in the name of Jesus. Uh, your hands will no longer be empty uh, in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, thank you, Father. Oh, thank you, Father. The support of God will be evident in your life. When people see you, they will see that God is supporting you. He's supporting your goals. He's supporting your business. He's supporting your marriage. In the name of Jesus. Lift up your voice and thank Him. Thank Him because you received His support this month of me. Oh, I received the support of God. In Jesus' name we are praying. You may be comfortably seated in the presence of God. Look at your neighbor to your right and to your left and welcome them to church. Say neighbor, it's great to see you this beautiful Sunday morning. Those of you watching online, thank you for joining us also. You are welcome. Praise God. I said praise God. Hallelujah. All right, so let's get into the Word of God today. So this month, we are starting a new teaching series around the subject of finances. How many of you like to make some money? Or, or you're good? Like, you know, you lucky people, you know, you guys have a lot of money. You know, you, are, you have enough. You know, you have enough. But I don't know about you, but I like to make some money. I, 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 I need some. I need some. Oh, thank you. A whole lot. <laughs> Please don't be kind out in church. Amen. So today we're talking about finances and we're starting a new teaching series on finances. And I'm talking about developing an abundance mentality. We had a powerful session in the first service and we're just going to continue from there. Developing an abundance mentality. Someone says, Pastor, why do you want to teach about finances? A church is just meant to be teaching about prayer and consecration to God. I understand that. But guess what? Sometimes it can, you know, you can pray in the heat. You can pray in AC. God will hear both. Or you don't know. If you pray in the heat and you pray in AC, God will hear both of them. I'd rather pray inside AC. Or what do you think? So it is important. And when you look at the prayer points that people have, 80% of people's prayer points are about finances. If I ask you what do you all want, What's your first prayer point? My father, my father. So it is important that we talk about it. And for some of you, you are very okay. You are doing a hundred million a year. You are doing one million dollars a year. You are fine. Guess what? You can be better. Yes, you can be better. And okay, you don't even want too much. You don't want to be, you know, some of you are afraid of money. Let's talk, I want to deal with that later because some of you, you are so afraid. Say, ah, pastor, I don't want to be so wealthy. So, we we'll talk about that. But for some of you, you are okay. But guess what? You have someone that is always coming to you for urgent 2K. And they've been coming to you for the past five years. It, they have to stop at a point now. So you can gain some insights that you can share with them. Now, when you talk about the subject of finances, there are a lot of factors. There are a lot of things to consider. Sometimes the background is very important. Sometimes the school you go to is very important. Sometimes the environment that you grew up in is also very important. 
But you have people that have all those things going for them, and things are still not okay. I remember they told us, when you go, come out with first class, you will get a good job, and you'll be very wealthy. How many of you did tell that? When you get first class? All right, I, I know some people that, are, that have first class, and they still don't have a job. So it's not by education. But there's one primary thing that is critical that you cannot do without. And that's the subject of the, fi of the financial mindset. And when God wants to change the economic state of an individual, God doesn't rain Ghana must go from heaven. How many of you have gotten Ghana must go from heaven? You've seen dollars raining when you're not in a party. If you see dollars raining, you're in a party. FYI. You've not seen that. Why? Because God doesn't rain fine money from heaven. Some said, if God sends you money from heaven, it will be fake. <laughs> because they print money on earth. Glory to God. So, God doesn't send money from heaven. What does that mean? If God wants to change your economic state, he's not going to send you money. What he's going to do is to change your mental state. Why? Once your mental state can change, your economic state will change. And that is why we talk about the mentality you have when it comes to finances. And why you must develop an abundance mentality. Why? Because the Bible says, as a man thinketh in his heart, so he is. The Bible says that we should be transformed by the renewing of our mind. And you know why the scripture is so powerful? It says be transformed by the renewing. If you renew your mind and you start making $1 million, you need to renew your mind to get to $10 million. So renewal of the mind is continuous. It doesn't stop. And that's why we teach this all the time. Glory to God. I said glory to God. So if you want to change somebody's economic state, you must change their mental state. And that is why all those that win the lottery, nobody ever became wealthy through the lottery. If they did, they must have had a good advisor that collected the money when they made it. Why? You don't change the state of a man from the outside alone. How many of you went to body house? When your seniors are leaving body house, what they give you? Uniform, right? Good. Some of you went to body house. Some of you did not go. Tush. We went to body house in the north. So my senior, one of my seniors, this guy was a very, you know, sharp guy. Like, he dresses sharply. That's what I mean by sharp guy. And so I used to eye his trouser. And by divine providence, he chose me as his school son. You remember school son? Good. So he chose me as his school son. So when he was living, the guy used to suffer me. Oh, but when he was living, I said, this trouser, I must collect it. Can you imagine how we used to think? Trouser. I didn't say give me shares. I didn't say give me dollar. I didn't ask for important things. So you can see the state of our mind. So he gave me the trouser. Once I started wearing the trouser, everybody said, ah, Sani, because that's what we used to call him, Sani. So they used to say, ah, my wife, you have inherited something. The trouser will be very sharp like this. I used to go days. That kind of trouser, eh? You can wash it, bring it out. You will not know that it was not ironed. The ghetto is perfect. You know ghetto? Okay, I have to teach for all those things. Ghetto, sharp. So when I started wearing it, I just used to go around. They say, ah, sunny, sunny. But guess what? Me, I thought I was a sunny. I wasn't sunny. Nothing. After three months, the trouser disfigured. Rather than the trouser transforming me, I transformed the trouser. Why? Because my real state came out. What was I? I was a ruffian. Glory to God. So, the mentality about money, having a healthy mentality about money, is so, so important. What do you think about money? Some of you think money... You know, you know a lot of Christians, and this is so unfortunate because the devil just uses this to, to attack us. You say, money is the root of all evil. Is that what the Bible says? But I don't know why, where we got that from. Money. Hey! It's the root. Once you have money, you will misdo. Let me tell you something. So, some people say, ah, pastor, I know this brother. Before he was rich, he was okay. But when, when he became rich, he began to carry women. It's not the money that made him carry women. He has been carrying women in his mind. 
before money came. Money just gave expression to his desire. Why? Money gives expression to what is in your heart. Did you read in the Bible? David wanted to build a temple for the Lord. He said, I want to build a temple for you. I think it's the first Chronicles chapter 8, verse 18. He says, I want to build a temple for you. God said, no. But that you had it in your heart is a good thing. Glory to God. So, the power of mindset. Let's look at the power of mindset. Number one, why is mindset so powerful? Your life produces according to your mindset. Your life produces according to your mindset. Please put up Matthew chapter 7 verse 16. Your life produces according to your mindset. Your life produces according to your what? Mindset. Look, see what the Bible says. The Bible says, you shall know them by their fruits. When we see your results, we know what's in your mind. That's what the Bible is saying. You shall know them by their fruits, by what they produce. So your life is going to flow out of your mindset. Oh, glory to God. Your financial state today, what is in your hand financially today, is a function of your mentality yesterday. What is in your, fina- your state, your financial state today, is a function of your financial mindset yesterday. And your financial state tomorrow is a function of your mindset today. And that's why, see, all of you that keep saying, eh, is where I grew up from. Forget about, you can't do anything about where you grew up from, but you can do something about where you're going. And the way the devil puts you in a trap is to make you obsess over the things you cannot control. Glory to God. I say glory to God. So, why is the mindset important? The mindset is important because your life flows from your mindset. Whatever is too big for your mind is too big for your hand. Whatever is too big for your mind is too big for your hand. Whatever is too big for your mind is too big for your hand. Some of you, let's be honest. Let's be honest. You keep praying for God, bless me, bless me, give me billions. Have you seen one million naira before? You're not praying for billion. Do you know what billion is? I hope you know, once you become a billionaire, there are some people that are going to start chasing you. But you can't even imagine it. And I love the Bible. The Bible talks about the way they wanted to build the Tower of Babel. It said, this they have begun to do and nothing they have imagined will be what? Impossible. Why? Your imagination determines your destination. Your imagination determines what? Your destination. Your imagination determines what? Your destination. If you are going to get somewhere, you must have started it in your mind first. Everywhere we go in life, we go in our mind first. Everywhere we go in life, we go in our mind first. All this, Pastor, something, something happened. You know, when, when, someone, when people sleep with each other, and say mistakenly, and say one or two things, I'll be, how do you say that thing, please? It just happened, you know. It's, it didn't just happen. It, was, it had happened in the mind before it happened in real life. Glory to God. So whatever is too big for your mind is too big for your life. Some of you, you really, really do believe that there is no money in this country. Who told you? Which country are you in? Because sometimes I used to ask myself, is this is in this same country? Because every time you come fly back into the country, every time, even till now, you will still see foreigners. They will come. Once they get to the airport, they enter problem. Because once they get to the airport, they will separate us. But they don't care. Why? There's something they see. Glory to Jesus. I said glory to Jesus. So your mindset determines your destiny. Your mindset determines your destiny. Somebody that wants to become a doctor and somebody that just wants to become an accountant, 
There are two different destinies. The mindset of a doctor and the mindset of an accountant cannot be the same. An accountant, once he does school, three and a half years, almost four years, is thinking of a job. But a doctor has set himself, excuse me, for the next 10 years, I'm in school. And they are not complaining. Why? Because the destination has put them. What they've planned for themselves has set them on the course of their life. What they've planned? What have they planned? They've planned that this is how my life is. I'm going to be a doctor. There are some of you here, if they tell you, go and do masters, you will say, pastor, thank you. I'm okay. I'm one of them. By the grace of God, the only book I want to read is the Bible. But there are some of you. You want to do master? You want to do mistress? You want to do PhD? Why is where you are going is what you see. You need, you've seen Dr. XLZ in your name. I don't need doctor. Pastor is okay. I'm gone. Why? It's based on our mind. As much as I come, you know, I see people say, Pastor, I'm going to school for masters. Ah, ah. How much is masters? $40,000, $50,000. $50, but to them, based on what they see, it's important. But to me, <laughs> glory to God. I did not say it's wrong, go. I'm just saying, based on your mind. Glory to God. So why is mindset important? Because you perceive life through your mindset. Ah, this one is so important. You don't see with your eyes, you see with your mind. You don't see with your eyes, you see with your mind. That is why two men can be looking at a babe. One guy will say, ah, pastor, this one is so... And the guy's like, what are you seeing? Why? We don't see with our eyes. We see with our mind. Look at the children of Israel. Numbers chapter 13. They are going to spy the land. And they say, this land is too big. This land is terrible. We cannot do it. What did Caleb say? Verse 30. Caleb said, let us go up at once. Hi, Yakata. Caleb did not even say, let's prepare. Caleb did not say, let's do research. Caleb did not say, let's investigate. Caleb said, let us go at once. The same situation, different perspective. Why? It was the mind. The same situation, different what? Perspective. That's why some of you, maybe you lose a job, you start crying. Some people lose a job, say, wow, glory to God. Now I have an opportunity to go and start my business. The same situation, different perspective. Look at David. Oh my God. Hi. The army saw Goliath. First Samuel chapter 17. The army, they saw Goliath. Oh. They said, ah, this guy. Oh my God. They were in a defensive position. They were trying to manage and to be okay. David said, where is this guy? Let me kill him. The same issue, two different perspectives. I hope you know. The Israelites wanted to fight Goliath. David said, where is this so I can kill him? I hope you know there's a difference between fighting and killing. Do you fight mosquito? There are some things you don't fight. Why? It was the mentality of David that this one is not a fighting matter. It's a killing matter. That is why you see some of us, we know that the power of Mashuma Kamaduka. Oh, Pastor, calm down. The Bible says the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. Somebody say, But Pastor, you know, I'm now in Mexico, I'm now in Guata, Guata, Guatemala, um, I'm in China. You know, I, I, as, I've, as I'm here, I need to take it easy. You know, I can't just be ambitious. I can't just be, Who said that? The Bible says the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. I hope you know, there's really no landlord that is forever. Your house that you bought, you know you don't own the land forever. Oh, you don't know. If you go and check, some of you, your, the land, the years remaining for you is maybe 50 years. When I discovered I was angry, you don't really own it. And the government that leads it to you can choose to give somebody else. Now, even the government that gave you. <laughs> you know, before, the whole of Europe was the Roman Empire. Later, it was divided into countries. What does that mean? If war breaks out, God forbid, a country can come and sack another country and claim that land. 
So there's no permanent landlord. But the Bible says the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. Whether I'm in Macau, whether I'm in China, whether I'm in Uzbe Uzbekistan, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. My father is the owner. So whether I'm in China, UK, wherever, it doesn't matter. Anywhere I enter, I step in as a king. I step in as a prince. I step in as the owner. Say, uh, you know you're not in your country. Take it easy. Says who? The earth is the Lord. Anywhere we go, we take over. You did see NLP conference? You think we'll go to London and say, okay, we're in London now. You know, so let's take it easy. Let's go. No! Anywhere we go, we pack it out. Let them take it as indigents that were there. Yes, we are indigents. It's the mentality. It's the mentality. So, I was talking about David. So, David saw Goliath. Saw his opportunity. Oh, oh my God. David was so sure. David went to ask them, excuse me. The, uh, Lusa, Kuba, Tuka, Lasa, Kala, Di. David did not say, if somebody attempts to kill Goliath, what would they give him? Some of you, you are attempting success. David said, what would they give the person that kills Goliath? Because I will kill him. This person confirmed. He went to another person. Why? In the amount of two or three witnesses, a word is established. When he got it, he came back. He said, let's go. Some of us, the army said, Goliath is too big. We cannot fix him. David said, Goliath is too big. I can't miss him. Let it sink in. Let it sink in. The same issue, two different perspectives. The army said, Goliath is a big challenge. Some of you say, ah, I meant to raise $1 million. Ah, pastor, it's impossible. <laughs> $1 million, that's a job for GOD. Praise God. That's another opportunity for God to show himself. The same issue, two different world perspectives. Why is the mentality? The question is this, what mindset do you have? You know, we're here, we're managing, we're, we're, we're taking it easy. Don't take it easy. Don't take it easy. Don't take it easy. We don't take it easy, we take over. We don't take it easy, what do we do? We take over. You say, ah, pastor, you know this business, you know, I just started, I'm just a, I'm, I'm just a young one. <laughs> hey, can I tell you something? Records are there for you to break it. Records are there for you to break it. Why is it a record? So that you can break it. Because you're a record breaker. You're not a recorder. You're a record breaker. Oh, glory to God. Oh, glory to God. So, let's us talk quickly deal with recognizing scarcity mentality. Why is it that Christians have a challenge when it comes to fight their mentality? The reason is this. There is a lot of scarcity mentality in the minds of people. So let's talk about some symptoms of scarcity mentality so that you can begin to ask yourself, do I have scarcity mentality? One of the biggest symptoms, and everybody pay attention to me now, when it comes to scarcity mentality is this. Anyone that functions under scarcity mentality does not take responsibility for their finances. What does that mean? Let me ask you a question. Your finances this year, how much do you want to make? If it's not written down, you're not serious. How much have you made already? How much is left for you for the year? Do you know what you need to do to make it happen? That is taking responsibility for your finances. You know, we say this all the time. Any Christianity that says you will leave everything to God to sort it out for you is not complete. You know why? Because you are ultimately responsible for the outcome of your life. The earlier you realize that, the better for you. And let me explain why this is important. Please pay attention. Every time we say this in church, people always think that the pastor wants to criticize people. That is not why we say that. If you listen with the right perspective, you will understand why we say that. Think about it this way. If I am ultimately responsible for the outcome of my life, it means that where I am today, let's assume it's a terrible place, I brought myself there. The problem is this, that's where you end. No. If by my hand, I caused myself to be where I am today, but pastor has said 
that I am ultimately what? Responsible for what? The outcome of my life. What does that mean? If I want my outcome to change, the power to change the outcome is in my hand. So that gives you empowerment. But not that, oh, they are blaming me. They are blaming me. No! We are telling you that you have the power to change it. Wherever you are, you have the power to change it. You are the architect of your life. You are the architect of your life. Glory to God. So people with scarcity mentality, they don't take responsibility for their finances. People with scarcity mentality, they have very low expectations in life. And this is why people have low expectations. And I'm just being honest. You know, I'm a pastor. I've been a pastor for a while. So I, I, I speak to people. And we look at the story of um, <laughs> Lazarus. Luke chapter 16, verse 19. The reason why a lot of people have low expectations is this. There was a time they believed God. They believed that God, I'll make this money, I'll do well in this business, and they tried, they gave it their best, but it did not work out. And they tried five times, 10 times, 14 times, 20 times, they just made up their mind. I'm not doing it again. This life cannot be that hard. But can I tell you something? Rather than quit, why don't you come and say, I would like to write a book, 14 ways not to trust God, because if you trust God this way, it will not work. Stories from a real life example. Package it as a book and sell it. I assure you, you will make money. I'm telling you. But rather than having a very low expectation of life, look at what happened with Lazarus. Luke chapter 16, let me put it up, verse 19. Look at what happened with Lazarus. (laughs) And you are going to see mentality. What mentality does. The Bible says, there was a certain rich man which was clothed in purple and fine linen and fed some trustly every day. Next verse. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus which was laid at his gate full of sores. So we're going to continue. So this is Lazarus. Now, why was Lazarus there? Because people say, ah, you know, this shows you that Christians will always be poor and his bad people will always be rich. No. Look what the Bible says. Lazarus was desiring. So it didn't say Lazarus there, but remember, it's continuing from verse 20. And you know that when you write letters, you don't put verse in letters. You just write a whole letter. <laughs> so it's a continuation. I just want to give you perspective. So, and desiring to be fed with what? The crumbs, which what? Fell from where? Remember what the Bible says. As a man thinketh in his heart, so if he desired to be fed with the crumbs of the rich man's table, God is not going to force him. God is not going to force you to be wealthy. He will stay with you where you are, where you want to be. As long as you want to be there. Why? Because he loves you. God is not an evil spirit. He will not possess you and collect your hand and tell you to go and write the application when you've not written the application. God will not possess your leg and move you to the embassy to ask for the file for the visa. Is whatever you want to do. Is your helper. Is not your enforcer. God is what? Your helper. is not your enforcer. The Holy Ghost does not enforce you. He helps you. What do you want to do? I will help you. You want to sit down? I will help you. You want to wallow in pity? Okay, I'll comfort you. You want to go for gold? I will support you. That's why we pray that prayer. Lord, let your hand, let it be clear that you are supporting me. See the Bible, verse 21. And desiring to be fed of the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores. This was the story of Lazarus. This is how some of you, you are just like, Lord, I just want, I hope you know, they are trying to change, they are asking for minimum wage to move to 600 and something thousand. So if you are still earning below that and you think you are okay, you need to start checking. Because Bible did not say you should be okay. He said you will learn to nations. I hope you know the Bible said you will learn to nations. And it wasn't metaphoric. <laughs> so the question is this, when will you learn to nations now? When? See, you must get angry in your spirit. That no, 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 I'm not here to settle. I'm not here to settle. He desired to be fed of crumbs. They say, go for that promotion in your office. Mm. The people they promote, they know themselves. Ah! 
By your words, you are ensnared. The problem is this, and this is why when you have the wrong association, it's a challenge. You know why? When your friends that are not born again are speaking terrible, because you want to feel among, you will start talking terrible also. But you have forgotten life and death are in the power of your own tongue. Their tongue may be powerless. Your own tongue is powerful. Glory to Jesus. Glory to Jesus. Let's continue. Verse 22. <laughs> I want to show you mentality. And it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. Did you see something there? The rich man died. They buried him. The beggar died. There was no burial. I will never be poor in my life. I will never be poor in my life. Look at it now. The rich man died. They buried him. Beggar died. No burial. Next verse. <laughs> and in hell, he lift up his eyes, being in torment, and see it Abraham afar off, and Lazarus in his bosom. Next verse. And he cried. This is the rich man who see abundance mentality at work. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me and send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water so that he can cool my tongue for I am tormented in this flame. What audacity. You know what, what happened? The guy had moved from the real world, this world into the heavenlies and hell. And he still recognized Lazarus and said, this Lazarus, you are my servant. You, oh my, kuma sakabadu kabashatabai. Do you know something? When he was on earth, he never spoke to Lazarus because Lazarus was a beggar in front of his house. He used to send people to give him the crumbs. That is how he saw Abraham and said, Abraham, send Lazarus. I can't even talk to Lazarus. And Lazarus was in Abraham's bosom. He's in hello. It doesn't matter. Why? Mentality is mentality. My state, my, my physical location does not matter. Mentality is mentality. My physical location does not matter. See how confident he was, even though he was in hell. Such sagacity. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me. Send Lazarus that he may dip the finger in the water. Cool my tongue, for I'm tormented in this way. Look at the next verse. Look who. Next verse. But Abraham said, Son, remember that thou in my lifetime received the good things. Likewise, next verse. <laughs> oh my God. Look at what he said. And beside all this, between us and you, there is a great God fixed. So that they which would pass from thence to you cannot. Neither can they pass to us that would come from thence. Look at the next verse. Verse 27. Then he said, I pray thee. You know why he was still able to talk? He said, Father Abraham, when I was a businessman in, in the world, we had obstacle. But even in the midst of obstacle, we still get results. He said, even though there are all these obstacles, he said, then he said, I pray thee <laughs> that thou would have sent him to my what? Father's house. Why? He said, even though there's obstacle, we still get results. But you, the bank said, will not give you money. Hey, hey, I'm done. Why are you done? You are too young to be done. Did you hear me? You are too young to be done. There are some scriptures you quote. You, you, are, too, you are too young for that scripture. So I say, Pastor, Ebenezer, he that too. The Lord has helped us. We are here to stay. Here to stay where? You are just starting. So I say, Harvesters, you know, Harvesters has blown. We are not over the world. Blow where? We are not anywhere. We are still just, we are still just reacting. Then he said, I pray thee, therefore, Father, that thou would send him to my father's house. Next verse. For I have five brethren, that he may testify unto them, lest they also come into this place of torment. Next verse. Abraham said unto him, ha, Oh my God. Do you know the sagacity of this guy? This guy, oh, kuma, 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 kaba, super, kaba, day. He saw Father Abraham. Father Abraham to the Jews was mighty. And he called Father Abraham and gave Father Abraham assignments. He said, Father Abraham, collect assignments, go and deliver. Audacity. 
audacity. They say, ask God for what he wants. God, you know. God, I, I, I just want 5K. See, stop asking God for 5K. Your brother can give you 5K. He say, ask me for the nations. He just a 5K. What is 5K? What is wrong with you? He say, ask me for the nations. He's asking for 5K. 5,000, 10,000, 1 million. These are things that people can write check for you. They will even close their eyes. I want to challenge you today. He says, I'm the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? Oh God. Oh God. See audacity. If anything will happen to you, let nothing take away your mindset. I'm begging you. Anything can happen, but don't let it take your mindset. Don't let it rob you of your identity. Who are you? I'm seated in Christ. Far above principalities and powers. Oh, glory to God. 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 Don't settle. No. You are too young to settle. You are too young. 50, you are too young. 55, you are too young. 30, you are too young. Someone say, Pastor, you know, all I just need to do is to go abroad. And when I go abroad, everything will be okay. When you go abroad, join a political party. Say, mm -hmm. yes. They will not tell you not to. You can join a political party. And tell them, yes, we are those that determine the people that rule us. Not that you go. <laughs> the tax is now 40%. It has moved to 50%. Hey, we the masses. Oh, we the masses. Stop saying those kind of things. Stop saying those kind of things. As I close, one way to build your mentality when it comes to building your abundance mindset is your association. Who do you associate? And that's why if you're not in a small group, you're doing the wrong thing. Because you need to hear these things over and over and over and over and over until it settles. That's why I love our church. Because when you come now, we pump you with the fire of the Holy Ghost. 1 Samuel chapter 10, verse 6. I'm going to close from there. I just want to show you the power of association. 1 Samuel chapter 10, verse 6. So oh, glory to God. Oh, glory to God. Association can change your mindset too. Ah! And let me tell you something about association. Some of you think that, oh, for me to associate with somebody, I must know them. No. I don't need to know them. I only need to know what they do and do what they do. I've associated with them. Let me give you a quick hack. If there's any mentor you want that you're looking for, that you want them to mentor you, don't go and meet them. Excuse me, please. Come and mentor me. No! Just go on social media. Who are they following? Follow those people. What are they reading? Read the book. That is how you associate with them. And that's how you... Because you're... you're oh my God. Some of you, the reason why you want to associate with your mentor is so that you can take picture and put selfie. Selfie does not bless you. Is what you do with what you learned that will bless you. <laughs> Look at what the Bible says. First Samuel chapter 10, verse 6. The Bible says, And the Spirit of the Lord will come upon thee. Can you go to verse 5 first? Start from verse 5. <laughs> After that, thou shalt come to the hill of God, where is the garrison of the Philistines? This was Saul. God was talking to Saul. And it shall come to pass when thou art come that to the city that thou shalt meet a company of prophets coming down from the high place with a psaltery and a tablet and a pipe and a harp before them. So God was saying, You are going to meet all those people, you are going to associate with these people. Next verse, <laughs> and they shall prophesy. So when you get there, they are the ones prophesying, you don't know how to prophesy, they are the ones that have the abundance mindset, you don't know, you don't have the abundance mindset. Next verse. And the Spirit of the Lord will come upon thee, and thou shalt prophesy with them, and shall be turned into what? Another man. The turning into another man happens when you associate with the right people. 
That's why you must value association. All this one that you are working with a mentor and you say the person has annoyed you. Who is looking for what? There are some people that, that can never annoy me because of what I'm looking for. You say, ah, I'm annoyed me. You say, I'm keeping maddies. <laughs> you, you have not started. See what it says? And the Spirit of the Lord will come upon thee and thou shalt prophesy with them and shall be turned into another man. Ladies and gentlemen, build your mindset. Don't let anything reduce who you are. A lion is a lion. Whether it's in Nigeria or in Morocco, it's still a lion. Don't let location limit your identity. Because some of you, you want to travel now. The reason why you want to travel is so that you can escape. No, be traveling to go and take over, not to escape. Because once you escape, you will become a refugee. Did you hear me? Once you escape, you become a refugee where you're going. But when you go with the mindset to take over, wherever you go, you are going to what? Take over. Have you been blessed this morning? Can we rise up on our feet as we pray? Let's celebrate Jesus. Let's pray. What are you going to pray about? Oh, you're going to pray this morning. And you're going to say, Lord, help me to identify the negative mindsets that, I li that is limiting my finances. Help me to identify it and help me to deal with it. Can you pray? Can you pray? Everybody pray. Everybody pray. Everybody pray. Help me to identify the negative mindsets limiting my finances. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Everybody pray. Oh, help me to identify the negative mindsets that are limiting my finances. Oh, shakata kula basaka la breke zege de basata breka da dusa. Zeke teke leke de gede gede de gede re bazura bazure bazade de bazada balu. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Hallelujah. Come on, if you have been blessed this morning, can you give the Lord a big shout of praise? Hallelujah. As you have your seat in God's presence, praise the Lord.